Hello again, everyone. Tom Riley, Senior Partner at Gross McGinley. Today, we're going to talk about non-competition agreements. This is actually the first of a three-part series on non-competition agreements. The first part is going to be, what is a non-competition agreement? Part two is going to deal in more detail with the enforceability of non-competition agreements and non-competition covenants. And part three is going to deal with the FTC's recent attempt, ongoing attempt, to take federal control of non-competition agreements, currently the purview of state law, and essentially make the concept of the non-competition agreement illegal and unenforceable. To begin with, we've got to go back to the beginning. What is a non-competition agreement? In its essence, it's essentially a covenant, a fancy way of saying agreement, whereby an employee agrees that while it's employed by an employer and for a period of time thereafter, the employee will not work for a competing business for a certain period of time in a certain geographical area. Now, non-competition covenants or agreements apply not only in employment contracts, very often they're part of independent contractor agreements. So whether you're looking to work as an employee, whether you're looking to work as an independent contractor, or whether you're an employer who um, is deciding whether such covenants are appropriate in your contractor agreements or your employment agreements, you need to understand the concept of non-competition covenant or agreement first before you move forward to implement or understand how it's going to be forced by you or against you. The purpose of a non-competition agreement is simple. It is really exists to protect the business interests of the employer. The employer spends time and resources in training employees, bringing uh, assets to the table, introducing them to co-workers, introducing them to the proprietary trade secrets of the company, introducing them to the, cu the customers of the company. And that is an asset that the employer wants to and should protect. It also protects the proprietary information of the employer, the trade secrets, the know-how, the processes, the procedures that an employee or an independent contractor learns in working with an employer. So uh, non-competition agreements, enforceability does vary by state. Some states do not permit them at all. Other states have very strict guidelines about how they can be enforced and other states tend to be more lenient. Pennsylvania is primarily an employer-friendly state. Non-competition agreements generally are enforceable as long as A, they're signed in conjunction with the start of employment or a change in position, a promotion, a raise, and they're reasonable as to scope, geographic area, and duration. So you need to recognize as an employee or prospective employee, if you sign a non-competition agreement or agree to a non-competition covenant, I'll explain the difference in a second, you'll be bound, well, you will likely be bound by that covenant for some period of time after you cease work for your current employer. And that is true whether you voluntarily quit, whether you're fired, or whether you're laid off because the employer doesn't have sufficient work for you. Notwithstanding how you leave the employment at your separation from employment or at the end of your independent contractor term, you'll be bound by the restrictions you agreed to at the start of that term. Very often people don't realize they've agreed to a non-competition covenant. And notice they said covenant, not agreement. Sometimes non-competition covenants are contained in agreements called non-competition agreement. Simple enough. I know I signed a non-competition agreement. I just read the title of the document. But very often they're also in other documents. They can be found in employment contracts, very often called at-will employment contracts. They can be found in confidentiality agreements. They can be found in agreements concerning proprietary information. The covenant itself, the agreement to not compete and not solicit, is the enforceable part, not the name of the, the agreement you sign in determining whether or not you're bound by this provision. So it is important before you sign anything at the start of new employment as an employee, you make sure you understand and agree and are willing to be bound by the terms of non-competition and non-solicitation. What that means is two things. Number one, you won't be able to compete in, for another employer in the business of your current employer for some period of time. You won't be able to go out and start your own competing business uh, for some period of time. And you won't be able to solicit customers, employees uh, of your, your existing employer, again, for some period of time after you cease the employment relationship. So it really all comes down to enforceability. And as I said, Pennsylvania tends to be fairly employer friendly in enforcing non-competition covenants. Now I'm assuming most of you are here because either A, you're an employee who's been asked to sign a non-competition covenant, 
within an agreement and you want to understand how it works. Or you're an employer saying, maybe I should have non-competition covenants in my agreements with my employees, and you're trying to decide, decide the, the pros and cons of doing so. I also suspect though, that some of you are here because you're, you're either A, currently an employee bound by a non-competition covenant that you desperately want to get out of because you want to compete with your employer. And number two, you're an employer who has an all-star employee who also happens to be a problem employee, and you're trying to decide, if I decide to terminate this all-star, because I can't handle the conduct anymore, is that person going to be able to compete against me, taking my customers, taking my employees, damaging my business? We're gonna talk more about that next time, but I wanna leave you with a little bit of a cliffhanger, kind of in the spirit of who shot JR on Dallas or the assassination of the entire, attempted assassination of the entire Dalton family on Yellowstone. Perhaps not as dramatic, but enforceability will depend on what the covenant says and when it was signed, and whether there was adequate consideration for that covenant. You should be aware, though, before we get into next time, that both enforcing a non-competition covenant and defending a non-competition covenant can be very expensive. Very often, the existence of a covenant, even if you believe it's not enforceable or not applicable to your new employment, the mere presence of it may be enough to keep new employers from hiring you during the non-competition term. Why? Because they don't want to get embroiled in a lawsuit where they're going to be spending money defending a new employee to be, uh, to be able to work for them until that employee's proven themselves. We're going to talk a little bit next time about money damages that an employer can seek if an employee viol violates a non-competition covenant, as well as specific performance, an injunction, where essentially the court orders that you can't work for that employer, your new employer, or any other employer in a similar business for some period of time. So the enforceability is the important part. What you want to be sure is you understand what you're agreeing to before you agree. So for now, thank you for your time this time until next time.